All right, so I finished my general announcements, the highlights of which is that today is the last day for students to make up CFU number five. And then this week, we have one other new topic to cover on Tuesday and Wednesday, but Thursday will be review, and Friday will be the next unit test. Remember, that test is non-retakeable. It's a one and done. And students are strongly encouraged when you get CFU number five back tomorrow to plan on retaking it if you didn't do well on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, just so you can be that much more prepared for the test on Friday. Students are already given a couple minutes to complete the multiplication at the top of page 15. And now I'm gonna go through the four problems at the bottom before donating the rest of the period to you all to work on homework 18. Or if you want, you could work on homework 16 and 17 since that's what's due tomorrow. Homework 18 isn't actually due until next week, Tuesday, okay? Now, before I get into solving these problems, let me remind you of something I said last week. Anytime I look at a problem that has powers or radicals, Okay. The first thing that occurs to me is I want to get the thing that's being raised to a power or the thing that's inside a radical, the thing that's being raised to a power or the thing that's inside a radical by itself. That's my initial reaction to all of these equations. The thing that's being raised to a power, I want to get it by itself. Then I can deal with the power. Okay. Remember that roots and powers are opposites of each other. So if I have something like five raised to the third, the way I would undo that calculation is I would take the third root of that number. Oops, would help if I typed it in correctly. So let me do that again, math, there we go. I can undo that by taking the third root. So the third power and the third root are opposites of each other, okay? They undo each other and that's true for any power. If I take, you know, so if I did something like this, the third root of, the third root of five to the third, the third root and the third power are opposite operations. They cancel each other out, and you're just left with the five. And that's true for any power, any number. If I do something like the seventh root of 17.2 raised to the seventh, which, believe me, those numbers are horribly ugly, okay, the seventh power and the seventh root cancel each other out. Please put it away. Okay, and you'll notice that you get the 17.2. So the seventh power and the seventh root cancel each other out, leaving you with just the number on the inside. So this is the important idea. When I look at any of these equations, what I think is if I can just get the thing that's being raised to a power by itself, then I can get rid of that very quickly. Okay? So I'm going to demonstrate this four, pro four problems, and then the rest of the period is yours. So my initial reaction is I want to get that one-half power by itself. So I'm going to add three to both sides. This gets me here. 5x raised to the 1 half is equal to 5. Now, as a side note, if you would prefer to just keep it in this exponential form, more power to you. I have no problem with that. I personally would prefer, so this is, I'm going to show you two different paths that you can take at this point. My personal preference would be to rewrite this as a square root. Okay? You don't have to do that. But the reason I like to do it that way is because then I can see very quickly, oh, it's the square root. So I need to use the square power. And so what I would do to both sides is I would take both sides and raise it to the second power because I know that's going to get rid of the square root. Yes, sir. All right. So the question is, where do I get the square root in the first place? So one of the conversions that we talked about was if you want to convert this to radical form, if you really wanted to get technical with it, the numerator is the power of that thing. And the denominator is the power of the root. That is literally how you convert it to radical form. You take the numerator, and that's the power of the thing. You take the denominator, and that's the root of the thing. So, for example, if I told you rewrite x to the three-fifths as a radical, you'd have to say, all right, the denominator is my root, and the numerator is my power. So that's essentially what I've done here. I've taken the, the denominator and treated it as the root. I've taken the numerator, which is a 1, and... You don't have to write 5x to the 1, because 5x to the 1 is just 1, is, is just 5x, excuse me. Okay? All right, now, getting back to what I was talking about before, where my personal preference is to take this thing and rewrite it as a square root. Okay, and that's why Kata was asking, well, where did I get the square root in the first place? But if you don't want to do that conversion, here's another option. You can just say, well, the opposite of 1 half is 2. So let me take both sides and raise it to the second power. If the orange makes more sense to you than my square root conversion, then feel free to follow the orange. 
because they both lead to the exact same place. Whether you're doing the orange or you're doing my preferred method, either way, the very next line you're going to get is 5x equals 25. Doesn't matter if you're doing the orange or my preferred method. The very next line will be 5x equals 25. Either way, you get the same thing. So you decide which of those paths makes more sense to you. Okay? And then, of course, to get x by itself at this point, I would divide both sides by 5. And I get x is equal to 5. Now, remember something I said before. Let me shrink this down just so I have a little more space to work with. There we go. Okay? Remember something I said before was you want to take the number that you had and plug it into the original equation just as a way of making sure that you actually have the right answer. So I'm claiming x is 5. I'm going to take 5, plug it into that equation, and see if I get what I'm supposed to get. So I've got 5 times 5 raised to the 1 half minus 3. And I'm going to see what does this equal. Okay, And I'm going to cross my fingers and say, I really hope I get 2 because I know that's what it's supposed to give me. Okay? So I'm going to type that into my calculator. 5 times 5 raised to the 1 half minus 3. And I should get 2. We're on page 15. And the fact that I get 2 tells me I did this correctly. Okay? All right, jump into the next one, but stop me if you have questions. This one is, is kind of, oh, yes, question. All right, so one of the questions that was just asked is, will it always be the, the square root? And the only thing that I can really say is you really have to be paying attention to the number that's involved with the exponent or the root. For example, here we have the third root. So the way I get rid of the third root is I take the third power. Okay? So my first step in this case, since the, the root stuff is already by itself, which is kind of convenient, is I'm just going to raise both sides to the third power. Okay, remember that negative 3 to the third just means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Don't get lost in that part. Okay, now the third root raised to the third power, those things cancel out, leaving you with just the square root of, or excuse me, leaving you with just x minus 4. That's the whole reason I raised to the third power, to get rid of that third root. Now, can anyone tell me what is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3? Or we'll do it in parts. What's negative 3 times negative 3? 9. It's positive 9. So the first two 3s multiply to be 9. But what's 9 times negative 3? Negative 27. So now I know that x minus 4 is equal to negative 27. And now I'm one step away from solving for x. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Now remember, whatever we get for x, I'm going to plug it in. You good? Make sure you're taking notes. We're on the second problem. If you have questions, let me know. Okay, I'm going to add 4 to both sides, and I get negative 23. By the way, I think a really common mistake, and I'll address this in a moment, is people see negative 27 plus 4, and they want to say, oh, well, that's negative 31. I'm writing this in red because it's bad. Okay? But this is one of the reasons why I say take your answer and plug it back into the problem. Okay, I'm going to take my answer. I'm claiming that x is negative 23, and I'm going to see... Oh, I wanted this to be orange. There we go. I'm going to see what is the third root of negative 23 minus 4. What does that equal? And I'm going to hope that I get negative 3, because that's what the equation says, that it should be equal to negative 3. Now, I'll do this exact same thing with the negative 31. You're going to see it doesn't work, and that's how I would know that negative 31 is bad. Okay. Now, remember, the way you get the third root, the way you get the fourth root, the fifth root, whatever root you want, you hit the math key, and your variable root command is the fifth option down. It says x with the square root. Now, for some of your calculators, it's going to look like this. It's going to have a and s just kind of automatically inserted. That's a really easy thing to fix. Just move your cursor on top of it and type the number of root you actually want. Okay. Now, in this case, we're claiming x is negative 23, and the equation was x minus 4. So I'm going to take negative 23 minus 4. And when I hit enter, I should get negative 3. Now, if you had done the math wrong and you thought that it was negative 31, well, then when you plugged it in, you'd say, all right, I should get negative 3. And you wouldn't. You'd get some other funky number. And that's what should make you realize, okay, it's not negative 31. Questions? 
So that worked out. I don't know if I put a check mark on the other one. Check, because that one worked out too. Yes, sir. So I don't know if this is the question that was being asked, but I think it's worth saying. It would be wrong to add four in the very beginning because the negative four is part of the root. You can't add four to get rid of negative four until you first get rid of the root. Is that fair enough? All right, two more problems. Let me jump down here to problem number three. So again, I want to get the power part by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that negative four by adding four to both sides. This gets me 2x to the third is equal to 27. Now, just like we saw in the previous problem, although it was in reverse, in the previous problem, we had the third root, and the way we got rid of it was we took the third power. Now we have the third power, so the way you get rid of it is you take the third root. Okay, Roots and powers are inverse operations of each other. So if I do the third root of both sides, that gets rid of the third power, and that gives me just 2x on the left. Of course, then I need to know what is the third root of 27 because that is just a number. So I go to my calculator, go to the math command, select this x root option, and type the third root of 27. And I get 3. So now I know 2x is equal to 3. If you divide both sides by 2, this is what you need to do to get the x by itself. And you get 1.5, or if you prefer to keep it in fraction form, three halves is no problem. I have no preference between decimal or fraction form as long as the fraction is reduced. Now, again, you want to take this number. I think it's a good practice to double check your work. Okay, And I'll actually write it out in two different ways. I'll write it in decimal form and fraction form. So decimal form, it's two times 1.5 raised to the third minus four. Hey, let me write. Go away. There it goes. And I want to know what is this equal to. Or I could keep it in fraction form. And I could check that. Either way, I should end up with 23. That's the idea. Like the goal here is hopefully whatever we get here, we get 23. Okay. So I'm going to type in the first one. Two times 1.5 to the third. Minus four. And when I hit enter, oh, that should say 1.5, not 1.3. 1.5, there we go. And now when I hit enter, hopefully I get 3. Or 23, 23. Right, 23. And if I type this in fraction form, if you prefer to keep your answer in fraction form, no problem. That's the exact same thing. It should still get us 23. Okay, which is why I said I don't really care if you prefer decimal and you want to say x is 1.5. Or if you prefer fraction, you want to say x is 3 halves. Either way, you get the right answer. Questions? Okay, um, again, remember that my use of colors is very deliberate. Okay, If I use blue, that's my way of saying if this is on your paper, you're getting full work. If you can kind of trick your eyes into just seeing the blue, as far as I'm concerned, this, this, and this is you showing your work. Okay, if that's all that's on the paper and then you have the correct answer, you're going to get full credit. Okay, the green is optional, like that's extra work being shown, and the orange is just sort of thought process stuff of, let me check my work, let me make sure what I did is actually right. All right, one last problem. I will admit, I really don't like that three of these four problems involve the third root or the third power. I, I really wish I had included some problems that have like the fifth root or the seventh root or whatever. Okay. I'll comment on that in a moment after we get one step done here. So I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Remember, my goal is to get the square root portion by itself, or in this, in this case, the cubed root portion by itself. And this is where we're at. Third root of x minus 15 is equal to, the neg to negative 8. Now, if, let's just be clear, to get rid of the third root, you raise to the third power. But if this had been the fifth root, then we'd be doing the fifth power. If it was the seventh root, we'd be doing the seventh power. You know, whatever the root is, you do the exact same power to cancel it out. Okay? So that's why I was saying I really wish I had some examples that didn't just involve the cube root. Okay? 
Now, remember again that negative 8 to the third is just negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8. That's all that negative 8 to the third means. Yes, it's going to be a big number. On the left, we're just going to have x minus 15 because the third root and the third power are opposites of each other. Can anyone tell me what is negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8? Yep. Negative 512. Okay, negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64, but if you multiply positive 64 by negative 8 again, you get negative 512. And from here, you would add 15 to both sides, and you're going to get x is equal to negative 497. I think a common mistake here would be thinking x is negative 527. I'm going to write this in red because it's bad. I think this is a common mistake. This is bad. Okay, but again, all you have to do is take whatever your answer is. If you're not sure of it, take whatever your answer was, in this case, negative 497, and plug it in up top. Negative 497 minus 15, all of that in a square root, plus 7, and see what this is equal to. And hopefully it gets us negative 1. So I'm going to type that into my calculator real quick. And then I'll do it with the negative 527 to, again, reiterate this point of if you make a mistake, you can figure that out for yourself. Okay? So go to my calculator, math key. Go down to this fifth option. I want the third root of negative 497 minus 15. And then was it plus 7 or minus 7? Plus 7. And hopefully we get negative 1. And if I had done this incorrectly, and I thought this was 527, then I'm not going to get negative 1, and I'll realize, okay, I've done something wrong. I didn't get the thing I was supposed to get. Okay? But in this case, we do get negative 1, so that works out. All right, so those are the four problems that I wanted to get done with you all today. I'll zoom out a little bit more so you can see all four a little more easily. But it looks like I was able to get you 21 minutes. So my hope was to get at least 15. I got you over 20. Again, homework 18, you should now be able to do. But if you haven't done homework 16 or 17, focus on those first because those are due tomorrow. Okay? Anyone watching the video? Thanks for watching. Have a good one.